What's going on guys? My name is PJ and welcome to my channel. This most likely for a lot of you is the first video that you have seen of me and on my channel I talk about different ways that we can connect more and more deeply to our authentic true self. And no other teacher has helped me on that journey as much as one of the teachers. I consider both of these men that we're going to talk about today as teachers but one of these teachers has helped me so much and was one of the main and first and foremost teachers that I came across that helped me on my journey of connecting more and more to my authentic self, which is really my unconditioned self, the self beyond my conditioning, my programming, and the sense of who am I uh, in terms of the story. Beyond that story is the deepest sense of who we are and that true self of ours is access through the present moment. And no other teacher that I know of talks as well and teaches as profoundly about the present moment and the power of being present and the way to be present as this man that we're going to talk about today. I am going to talk about Eckhart Tolle, the author of The Power of Now. I may be too bright. The author of The Power of Now, Eckhart Tolle. And I'm going to talk to you guys about why I think Eckhart Tolle appearing in Kendrick Lamar's latest album, which is called Mr. Morale and the Big Steppers, which just came out. Actually, fun fact, it came out, the album came out last month. Today is June 17th of 2022. And I believe that today is actually Kendrick Lamar's birthday. So this just happened to be a coincidence that I'm shooting this, but I was on Apple Music and I saw that his birthday is today and I was like, whoa, what? So happy birthday to Kendrick Lamar if he randomly sees this video. But um, I wanted to just talk about why it's such a significant thing in my perspective that Eckhart Tolle, the power of now author and the New Earth's author in this book right here, which is an amazing book. Um, why this gentleman right here? why him appearing on Kendrick's album is such a big deal. So I'll talk to you guys a little bit about who is um, Eckhart Tolle later in the video. I'll briefly discuss, you know, a little bit about Kendrick if you are new to Kendrick Lamar and you haven't heard of him before. But mainly we're going to talk about Eckhart Tolle. We're going to talk about some of his teachings. Why is it significant that he's in Kendrick Lamar's album, my own journey with Eckhart's teachings and the first section of the video will be mainly about Eckhart Tolle, then we'll talk about Kendrick, then we'll talk about their collab together and why it's super awesome and important for our times that they linked up and this happened. So let's talk about the first time that I saw Kendrick Lamar work with Eckhart Tolle, which in this little video, I don't know why Eckhart Tolle's face was blurred out or it's like pixelated. And I think it was because um, Kendrick was probably, I think, maybe was trying to put out his album um, sooner than it ended up being. You know, he put it out in 2022. But some of the music, you know, as you can hear in that video that was posted in 2020, was already ready. So I don't know if because of the pandemic, he delayed the launch or whatever, but he was collaborating with Eckhart Tolle in form of, it looks like some form of therapy as if, you know, Eckhart Tolle is serving as Kendrick Lamar's therapist. And in the album, he certainly plays that role. You know, you can see him as a spiritual teacher, but I really feel like he shows up in the role of Kendrick's therapist in the album and he's guiding him through, you know, some of the challenges that Kendrick is facing, which is really cool, by the way, um, and how they have implemented Eckhart's teaching into the album. I think it's super creative, it's super awesome, and it's it flows super seamlessly. But the first time that I saw these two work together was this video by PG Lang, which is Kendrick Lamar's company. It's like an organization that helps artists of all different sorts um, and mediums to share their messages um, and put them out there. It's kind, of, it's kind of like a label, but you know, for a wider range of artists than just musicians, I believe. And this video was posted, I think in May of 2020, or maybe it was sometime in the summer, but it basically is about their mission statement. It's a mission statement, it's a visual mission statement of PG Lang. And this was the first time I saw Eckhart working with Kendrick, but like I said, his face was pixelated, but you can, if you are familiar with his voice, the first second you hear, you're like, that's Eckhart Tolle. And when you see him in his, in his, uh, 
original uh, signature outfit of little jack his white jacket and his little slacks and stuff and and just like his frame you're you're like okay yeah that's for sure Eric Cartoli but he's basically talking to Kendrick so I'll just actually play that video the segments that are related to Eckhart and Eckhart's teachings I'll play that here because a lot of people haven't seen it I don't think and it's not on YouTube it's only on PG Lang's website I mean it is on YouTube but it's not posted by PG Lang it's posted by some other individual but on pglang.com is when you can where you can f find it but here's a little clip of that video that Eckhart appears in as uh, we grow up we begin to identify things which means identify means we derive our sense of who we are from certain things when you're identified with something that you are not it always leads to suffering and unhappiness Okay, now that you saw and watched that video, which is not the, the whole video, but those are kind of the segments that are related to Eckhart's teachings. Now that you saw that incredible, mind-blowing video, let's talk about who is Eckhart Tolle. So Eckhart Tolle is most likely one of the most famous spiritual teachers in the world. And uh, I say most likely because, you know, obviously there are tons of spiritual teachers. But if you go on Amazon, if you go on Audible, which is, you know, audiobooks, and, and you go to the section of spiritual books or self-help books, the power of now has been like number one or in the top 10 for like years. I feel like since 2001 or whenever this book came out first originally, uh, it's been, you know, a top selling book. And then later his, uh, his other book, The New Earth, um, that book, they're all, they all have been top selling books. And Eckhart Tolle is just super, super well known. And it's, like I said, it's probably, he's probably one of the most famous spiritual teachers in the world. And The Power of Now has been read by millions and millions of people and has changed millions and millions of people's lives because it is super powerful. And a lot of people sometimes avoid that book because they think it's super popular. And because of that, it, it probably is just super bland and uh, generic. But it, like I said, it's been one of the most powerful books I've ever read um, and has been a part of my life since I was... Um, probably like 18. Um, I'm 28 now. So it's it's just a life-changing book. I revisit this like pretty much every every year, you know, multiple times in a year. And it is every time. It's one of those books that grows with you. Uh, and as you change and as you evolve, it evolves with you. And so different new parts of it stand out to you that before you may have not paid as much attention to. But nonetheless, let's talk about who is Eckhart Tolle. So Eckhart Tolle, like I said, is a spiritual teacher, one of the most well-known spiritual teachers in the world. And I, from my understanding, I believe his story goes something like this. So he was, for most of his life, based on his own, you know, explanation, was a pretty kind of depressed dude, somewhat nihilistic, didn't really have any sort of spiritual uh, rich richness or depth in his life and he was at one point you know at the end of his rope he was just like completely I feel like he was contemplating taking his life and he was just like deeply in that dark hole of depression and and didn't see a way out and what ended up happening to him is that at that rock bottom moment he miraculously as i've heard a lot of people who have um, been alcoholics or drug addicts and they have that deep rock bottom moment they end up experiencing such a miraculous kind of transformation where it's like at the end of your rope that's when the light appears when the the tunnel is the darkest it can be then the, then the light appears so that is just in in a lot of people's experience that's how just grace shows up and and helps us out but basically he was at the end of his ropes contemplating you know taking his own life and he just in that state falls asleep i believe and then when he wakes up everything is different like the next day 
the way he's seeing life, the way he's hearing sounds, the way he's going about his experience, everything has shifted in his experience and he doesn't feel that burden. As a matter of fact, he's feeling the happiest he's ever felt and not just a temporary happiness, but a deep sense of joy. What he calls later, you know, as he later realized what has happened to him, he calls it the joy of being, which is simply the joy, the deep joy, which is beyond happiness, which is dependent on circumstances. That joy is, is, a, it's devoid of the need of being dependent on any circumstances and it stands on its own and it's access through being present, deeply present. When your mind is quiet, it's silent, you're not bombarded by thoughts and you're still and you're present in this moment and you're simply just being. That being has a joy of its own and that's what Eckhart Tolle discovered. And what he basically went through is, um, I think it's called Satori. Satori, I think it's from a Zen or Buddhism from one of those traditions that term Satori, but it means sudden enlightenment. And that's what he experienced. And um, it's just the, the spiritual path in, in a lot of ways, it's not a linear path. It's not like you follow A, you follow B, you follow C, and then, and then this outcome happens. It's, um, it unfolds uniquely for each of us. And due to our, you know, just the circumstances, the karmic propensity that we have, all those kind of factors, um, are involved within it. And basically the will of God unfolds however it's supposed to unfold. But basically he has, a, he had a story and he woke up and for the next few years, he basically spent every day on a park bench, basically homeless, um, completely dropped out of the typical life that he had, the responsibilities, you know, the school, the job, like whatever he was doing, he just like, just, it, it, he was just a different person. And he just basically spent three, four years on a park bench in absolute joy and ecstasy. And then later, naturally, as the, the state, as the intensity of the state subsided for him, he was able to explain to other people and naturally other people were gravitated towards him because they saw that he's representing just like a new way of being just through how deeply happy and fulfilled he was. It's like other people would pick up on that. And naturally, um, as the intensity subsided of that say, he was able to put into words and explain to other people what's going on, what he's going through and for himself to also figure out and learn what is, um, what happened to him basically and, and be able to share that with other people. And this role of a spiritual teacher slowly and surely it, it was brought out of him, so to speak. And he became, um, a spiritual teacher and guide for a lot of people. He would at first, you know, go to their houses, give lectures for like two people, three people, five people. And slowly and surely that audience kind of grew. And, um, he felt deeply called to write a book about what he went through, which, and what he's learned from that experience, which turned out to be this book. Uh, he felt called to intuitively to move to the United States from England, which is, I think, where he was. Uh, he's originally German and he moved to the US. He moved to, um, LA or somewhere in the West Coast and wrote that book, uh, put it out. And I think surely after that, it became the biggest book on Oprah's, you know, favorite book club, uh, for like ever. And Oprah even did like a nine episode exclusive, um, interview with him when this book came out. And they just sat down with each other for like basically nine hours, each episode being like an hour long and talked about that book and the lessons in it and just the lessons and the teachings of Eckhart Tolle. So that's a little biography about Eckhart, his experience, what he went through, um, his sudden awakening and then his transformation into being a spiritual teacher and that role evolving, so to speak, out of him. And now he lectures all around the world thousands and mil you know millions of people probably have watched his YouTube videos, um, have read his books, thousands attend his lectures regularly. I have personally um, have read these books and have bought like pretty much, I don't know, maybe 20 audio programs from Eckhart throughout the years um, on Audible and different platforms and actually was a part of his School of Awakening, which was like his big course um, that he had. And then also his other course that was called conscious manifestation. And it's not that 
With Eckhart, and I'll segue into this other point as to why he's such an important teacher and a powerful teacher. With Eckhart, it's not that you necessarily, you know, watch his videos more or get his courses more or like listen to uh, his audio programs, read his books more to learn new information. It's more so literally he himself embodying and exemplifying that state of presence that in and of itself is a teaching. Literally, like I have never seen a human being in that state, that present. To a point that even through a screen, watching him on YouTube through a screen or through, you know, audio programs and listening to him through just that, that state, I feel like gets transferred into me. And it's like, it, it evokes that out of me, that deep stillness, that deep state of being present. And so you don't really listen to Eckhart to get a lot of information, especially if you have read his books, which do contain information, a lot of information. But then all his audio lectures and stuff, yes, he talks and he lectures, but really you're just, most people are just listening because of how contagious his state of being is. And it, it brings that out of others. And that is why I believe he's such an important teacher is because he truly exemplifies the teachings within him versus just talking about it and not living it. You know, he truly walks the talk and is the example of what his teachings are. So super powerful teacher. Like I said, I have never seen or heard of another teacher or anyone for that matter that is that present and can share that, can, you know, put others in that state as well. It's just like, it, he's just a really powerful teacher and an example and really a way sure he shows us another way of being. So that's why he's important. Now, the teaching of Eckhart that Kendrick really focused on and I think it was probably the most powerful teaching for him personally that he really focused on in his new album uh, Mr. Morale and the Big Steppers it's the teaching on what Eckhart Tolle calls the pain body and I'll read this passage for you guys from the power of now where Eckhart explains what the pain body is and it really has to do a lot with trauma um, and obviously Kendrick in that album if you listen to it he's going through a lot of um, unfolding and uncovering, basically doing therapy work on traumatic experiences in his own life and the trauma, the, the hidden deep rooted trauma that he's had from different experiences in his life. He's trying to unpack that so that he doesn't pass that on to his future generations and don't cause generational trauma. And as you can see on the album cover of this album, he's showing that he's, you know, he's now a father and he has two young children and he's really trying to do that self-reflection work that you know any wise conscious parent would do is like how can i be the best version of myself so that i can be the best example for my children and he's really trying to do that and a big part of that is healing trauma and is healing the pain body and so this is what cartoli says about the pain body this is from chapter the chapter in Power of Now that's called Consciousness, The Way Out of Pain. And the section that he directly talks about this is called Past Pain Dissolving the Pain Body. Right here. So, it says here that as long as you're unable to access the power of now, every emotional pain that you experience leaves behind a residue of pain that lives on in you. It merges with the pain from the past, which was already there and becomes lodged in your mind and body. This, of course, includes the pain you suffered as a child caused by the unconsciousness of the world into which you were born. This accumulated pain is a negative energy field that occupies your body and mind. If you look on it as an invisible entity in its own right, you are getting quite close to the truth. It's the emotional pain body it's the emotional pain body. It has two modes of being, dormant and active. A pain body may be dormant 90% of the time. In a deeply unhappy person though, it may be active up to 100% of the time. Some people live almost entirely through their pain body, while others may experience it only in certain situations, such as intimate relationships or situations linked with past loss or abandonment, physical or emotional hurt, and so on. Anything can trigger it, particularly if it's if it resonates 
with a pain pattern from your past. When it is ready to awaken from its dormant stage, even a thought or an innocent remark made by someone close to you can activate it. So basically, he then goes on and talks about it um, way more. So you can read more about it and learn more about it in both of his books. I think in both of them, he talks about it. But basically, the pain body, like he says, is is like an, for lack of a better word, it's like a demonic entity. It's like, it's an entity of its own that's um, that's like just made up of these deep rooted traumas and all the pain of the past. And it's become its own being that is literally looking like, and that's what he says in the, in either the video that I shared earlier or in the album, he, Eckhart says this pain body is literally like an entity that's just like any other entity is trying to survive and is trying to feed on more negativity, which is really its food that keeps it going. It's trying to feed off of that and to keep itself alive. So sometimes when we have a really disproportionate response to something that is not like that, it's just like an innocent remark, like he said, and it brings out that trigger brings out this vicious monster out of us. That is a clear sign that the pain body, our pain body has been, been triggered. And there's another phenomenal book called The Body Keeps the Score. And this book is all about how trauma and traumatic experiences get lodged in our body. So not only like this pain body is this energetical thing that has this, ex- this entity, energetical entity, but really, truly, factually, it's literally lodged in our body as well. And our musculatures are still holding on to this pain. And so until we do that trauma release work and, you know, go to therapy or through other modalities, spiritual modalities or whatever form um, of healing, we end up accessing to work on those traumas until that, that pain body, it's still very much alive. And our triggers actually can become our best teachers and become the way that we free ourselves. Because if I have this, this pain body that is inactive 90% of the time, I don't even know it's there. It's like, it's like if I have a little, um, I don't know, it's like I have a little phone old phone somewhere that I've forgotten about and randomly it rings. Then because it's ringing, I remember that I have a phone there. Oh, like, you know, like for example, I I still have my old iPhone and sometimes when it, I turn it on for some reason and then it stays on, then randomly gets notifications and I'm like, oh, that's, you know, I have my phone, you know, that other phone I totally forgot about. And that's how the pain body, when it gets triggered, it reminds us that it's there. So these triggers can actually become, can become, if we are willing to look at them, it, they can become like a little window or something that we look through to see the pain body. It's like they give us a, a way to observe it. It's like, oh wow, like I, this, this person said this thing and now I'm way more pissed off than I should should be basically just based on what they said like in what they say maybe just an innocent remark like Eckhart Tolle said but how my body is reacting how my emotions are reacting how my mind is reacting it's like this is some, there's something else going on based on just how worked up I'm getting over this simple remark and if you have a deep insecurity or, or or you know something related to some sort of past pain or trauma you, we all know if somebody says something about that even if they don't mean it in that way, it triggers that. And so it's our job now that ha- that has come up to sit with that and release that. A good book on this topic is called The Letting, it's called Letting Go by David R. Hawkins, which I highly recommend. And another great book on just trauma, pain body, um, type of stuff related to that stuff, um, is How to Do the Work by the Holistic Psychologist. Dr. Nicole LaPera. So these are all great books, including The Body Keeps the Score um, and obviously The Power of Now and all these books. But that's basically what Kendrick Lamar really focuses on um, in Mr. Morale and the Big Steppers. I think that's what really he wants his audience to hear the most about because I think that probably was like the Eckhart, the part of Eckhart's teaching that resonated with him the most and that he really um, wanted to work on more. So he really shares a lot about that. And Eckhart Tolle shares a lot about that um, in that album. So now let's talk about the different songs that I heard Eckhart Tolle appearing in. They are as followed. And I think actually the first time he appears in the album is not actually him appearing, 
funny enough. And I remember like when I was listening to it for the first time, which I was up when it, like, it, uh, it came out on um, at midnight on, you know, on a Friday. So I was listening to it. Uh, and I remember like on the third song or fourth song, which is called Worldwide Steppers, Kodak Black opens the album and or the song and he says his name and then he says Kendrick Lamar's kind of new uh, alias so to speak Oklahoma which I actually I actually live in Oklahoma and I did some research and apparently it's deeply rooted in Oklahoma and it means our people from what these um, people were explaining it in that video I, I saw but it's based on Oklahoma in a lot of ways and the tribe of Oklahoma uh, in Oklahoma and actually his first stop Kendrick's first stop on his new tour for Mr. Morale and the Big Steppers is Oklahoma City so I mean that definitely I feel like is probably like um, related to the, the Oklahoma relationship to Oklahoma is I think is is legit and that's why he chose Oklahoma City to be the first stop but nonetheless Kodak Black and his unique voice is saying his name you know, Kodak Black, Oklahoma, and then he said Eckhart Tolle. And I was like, are you serious? Like, what? And I, you know, I was so excited in 2020 when I saw that video of Eckhart and Kendrick talking. And I was like, oh my God, he's going to put out like some sort of video or podcast or something with, uh, with Eckhart. You know, obviously I've been a big fan of Eckhart Tolle. I'm a huge fan of Kendrick Lamar. His damn album pretty much changed my freaking life, got me out of depression. Um, and, and, and his just him sharing what he's learned has helped me a ton. And so I was like, these two collabing is just like, it's just going to be freaking awesome. It's going to be the collab of the century. And lo and behold, he was in the album. So that was like the first song that I heard his name on. And then in the song Count Me Out, I heard, I heard Eckhart's unique and it, it, like his voice, you'll just notice immediately if you hear it. And I heard him say Kendrick's last name in the song, uh, Count Me Out. He said, Mr. Duckworth in his, in his accent. And I was just like, oh my God, this just keeps getting better and better. And then he like sh literally showed up in the album and just like gave like whole, pretty much whole speeches in some parts. Um, the other songs where he shows up in are Savior and savior interlude and i think oh and then he shows up at the end of mr morale um, and gives like a whole explanation of the pain body so if you want to check out you know his appearances those are the parts that i found um, in the album where he shows up in all right now let's talk about some other teachings of Eckhart Tolle because like i said most of his teachings um are in these books and when you really listen to like his youtube videos or lectures is really you're just trying to catch a vibe. You're just trying to pick up on Eckhart Tolle's presence. These two books. Come on, autofocus. Work with me here. Focus and be present. All right, there we go. That's as best as I could do it. But basically, you know, most of his teachings are in these books. So I'll just I I went through the Power of Now, looked at all the chapters, and these are the teachings of Eckhart Tolle that stand out to me the most, and and that personally have helped me the most. The first one, as the name implies, the power of now is about the power of being present, being in the now. And basically what the way I always um, think about that and explain that, I think about that's funny because you try not to think. But the way I would think about that and explain that is like so many of us, and this is how I experienced it. The first time I felt like I'm truly present, it was like I woke up from some sort of sleep that I didn't even realize I was in. And it was almost as if until that moment, I had never felt present to a point where my mind is silent, where it's just like I'm just being in this moment. No thoughts. So many of us have never had that experience. And there's a really awesome quote by, by uh, Pascal, I believe, the mathematician. Yeah, I think, I think that's who it's by. Um, but it basically says all of man's troubles or problems are caused by his inability to sit alone in a room with his thoughts or just alone in a room. But basically, that quote is so true because I feel like for me, you know, I never was present until I 
I was. And that's when the teachings of Eckhart really came to life for me. But the way I would explain it is all of us have this air conditioned hum in our minds, which is all of our thoughts. It's just like constantly going on to a point where like, it's like, we don't even know any other way. It's like we're fish in water where we don't even notice the water anymore. It's like, it's just these thoughts are just like constant. And these thoughts are like the hum, are like the humming of an air condition that's going on. And you don't realize that that air condition was going on until it turns off. The moment it turns off, then all of a sudden you're like, oh my God, that was so loud. I didn't realize how loud that sound was, you know, and how distracting it was until it turns off. And so our thoughts and basically these repetitive thoughts that we have all day, all throughout the day, until they get quiet and stop, whether it's through meditation or any other forms of meditative kind of practices or just getting present to the moment, until they stop, you don't realize what you're missing out on. Until they stop, you don't realize how loud they are and how distracting they are from the moment. Like life happens in the moment, not in your thoughts about the moment. And that's something I've told myself a lot. It's like, not that thoughts are bad. Like, I don't think, sometimes I think I definitely have fallen into this trap of like, oh, never think, never just thoughts, thoughts are bad, you know? But no, thoughts are great and very, are very powerful tools. But like Eckhart Tolle says, it's like our thoughts for most people, their thoughts use them versus we consciously using our thoughts for different purposes. You know, it's like if you have to solve a problem, you have to think and and think through the problem and do um, problem solving. And and for different reasons, you you have to think. But it's that most of our thinking is unconscious and um, it's just like we're not aware of it. It's just like happening automatically. And so we want to bring consciousness and awareness to our thoughts and be present so that when we do think we're choosing to think versus our thoughts kind of thinking us and like we're like a remote controlled robot and our thoughts hold the remote and we're just like at their mercy and their victim versus we choosing our thoughts and they become kind of like tools that we use and have and I think and and as Eckhart Tolle explains in the new earth I, I believe which is basically talking about like how does, how, how did this whole incessant kind of thinking come about in the human mentality and race? And he basically talks about how like, he believes that it wasn't ever meant to be, like we weren't ever meant to use thoughts in the way that we are using them now. It was meant to be like something that we have the ability to do and we use it um, when we need to for survival reasons, for whatever reason. And then we learn how to be quiet again. We learn how to be silent again. But now due to centuries of like us just like overthinking, it's become this thing. It's like become like a monster that we can't control these thoughts, our thoughts and our mind has just like, it's just running amok. And so being present and what Eckhart teaches, one of his main teachings is how to be present and quiet those thoughts and in your mind. And, um, and a great book, actually the book I learned meditation from, um, this book really helped me get into meditation. I love hip hop and this book is written by a hip hop legend, Russell Simmons, the founder of Def Jam. He's a, like a big time yogi and, you know, talks about meditation a lot. But basically there is a book by him called Success Through Stillness. This book was actually the book that taught me meditation. It got me into meditation and I really resonated with his way of talking about meditation. But basically, it's the same thing, quieting the mind, quieting the thoughts, and just being, being present. So um, that's the first teaching of Eckhart, and that book I just talked about is a great book to learn about meditation in particular, which is a powerful practice to quiet the mind. The second teaching I already talked about, so I'm not gonna go more into it, but the pain body. You know, I was just going through the chapters here and going in order of what things really stood out to me from the many times I've listened to the audiobook of this book, um, I've read it. Uh, and the pain body, obviously, as it was significant for Kendrick, it was significant for me. Um, and it that's, I would say, is one of the most important teachings of Eckhart Tolle. But let's mo- move on to the next teaching that has stood out to me and has helped me a ton. And that is the teaching of Eckhart Tolle about the different ways that we can get into the present moment, the different way he calls the gateways into the now. And the one I'm going to talk about now briefly is a, is... Um, the gateway into the now of the inner body. It's basically like 
a body awareness practice. He's talking about how like most of us, it's almost, I, the way I explain it is like, it's almost like our body is like a ghost. Like we don't even sense it. It's like, we're just like numb to our body. And um, most people, like, especially if you're unhealthy, like we, we have pain and, you know, we just don't feel great. So we refuse to feel what our body feels like because it's uncomfortable. There's pain there. There's emotional trauma there, all, all this stuff. But one of the most powerful things we can do is to be grounded in our body. But really what Eckhart is talking about related to that gateway into the now of the inner body, he's talking about the practice of sensing the body. And actually based on that, I have a video on my channel called um, The Body as a Gateway into the Present. Um, and that video, I'll link it up there uh, so you can check that out. But that is basically a body awareness practice. Feel the sensation in your hands, feel the sounds, feel, well, the sounds are not part of your body, but, but you know, feel the sensation in your hands, feel the sensation in your legs, feel how it feels to sit on this chair, feel your breath, feel your senses, become aware. And through that simple practice of just feeling and sensing, you can get deeply present. You can get into what he calls the inner body, which is like the aliveness within your body, the life within your, within your body. And that, that, that is like what he calls like, it's like a part of the greater consciousness and it's, it's within us and we can tap into that. And he was like, in one of the audio programs, programs I listened to by him, he was like, why is there like this conspiracy of no one talking about this? Like, this is like the, one of the most important things of like how, if you are just sensing your body, like you're just being in your body, you're sensing, you're fully present, you can literally evolve your consciousness, your awareness. You can get into a different state of consciousness where you're much more awake, much more fully present and can make better decisions, can think better, can like do basically everything better. So it's just a super powerful practice, but there are many other gateways that he talks about in the Power of Now um, on how to be present. So you can check the Power of Now out and learn more about those. But the inner body is the one that has helped me a lot in, in my own personal life. And side note, I love the Enneagram, which is a personality typing system. And on the Enneagram, I'm a type nine. And type nines, actually, it's been recommended to them more than any other type, well, besides maybe fives, to get into their body, to become present through becoming aware of their body and not being numb to it and becoming aware. So that practice has definitely helped me a ton in my own personal journey. Okay, the next teaching of Eckhart Tolle that I'm gonna talk about is basically a name of a chapter from The Power of Now where he says, beyond happiness and unhappiness, there is peace. And I, I just feel like that sentence stands on its own and it's super powerful, especially when you experience it experientially and get the meaning of it experientially not just like oh wow that's like a beautiful phrase to put on your background on your phone but no like when you experience what he's talking about in that simple phrase and basically he talks about how these like powerful sayings are are pointers to that state and the pointer can point you in that direction but it's gonna but you're gonna have to go there you know it's like if i see a road sign that road sign may be point, pointing me in the right direction, but then I have to walk there or drive there or whatever, you know, ride my bicycle there and I have to go there myself. So these pointers, like that phrase can help us a lot, but they are just a pointer. They're not what's being, they're not the experience. So the experience is what really matters. And being present, deeply present, if you've ever felt it through meditation, through Tai Chi, Qigong, running, breathing practices, Wim Hof breathing, whatever it may be. If you've ever felt that state of presence, you know that there is this deep peace that is beyond the level of thinking. It's like, it's deeper than the surface of the ocean, which would like, if basically it's like if, if the ocean is our mind and our, our being, the waves on the surface are like the thoughts that are passing. And then deeper, deep down, it's like how on the surface of an ocean literally can be a hurricane or some sort of major storm. But if you go deep enough, it's complete stillness and quiet. And that's how the present moment can get us in that peace that passes all understanding. It can, when we're deeply present, we can get to that state that's beyond the thinking, beyond the dualities of life. And it's 
this unchanging peace that, you know, I think it, what's what in the Bible is referred to as like the peace that passes understanding. It's like the realm of the spiritual is the unchanging realm. The realm of the spirit is the unchanging realm. And these qualities of spirit, like peace, like joy, like just fulfillment, contentment, these are unchanging attributes of that deeper essence of who we are. And when we're deeply present beyond the conditioned mind, we feel those as a state of being that never changes regardless of, and I think that's like the good news, like regardless of what the heck happens out here, there is a deep essence within me that never changes. That unchanging essence is who I am. And if I can root my being and my identity in that unchangingness, then whatever changes, it doesn't affect me at all and whatsoever. So yes, I may be affected in different ways, like on the surface of my life, but deep down, I know there's a peace that never changes. And that's what the chapter is really talking about is when you pass this level of the surface of your life, which has happiness, you know, unhappiness. Sometimes I'm unhappy. Some, oh, I just saw this movie and it made me feel good. I'm happy now. And then I get in an argument with my significant other and I'm unhappy now. And then this happens and then I'm happy. And then this happens. I'm unhappy. Beyond that, there is a peace that never changes. And that what, that's what Eckhart is trying to point us towards with that phrase and that chapter. So I want to share that as one of his main teachings as well. And the last teaching I want to talk about related to, you know, about the teachings of Eckhart Tolle is what I wrote down, finding the life underneath our life story. And it, it's very similar. It's almost the same thing as the last point, but I wanted to bring emphasis again to that because I think it's super powerful. And it's something that I have benefited a lot from in my own spiritual journey. I think the spiritual journey really is a journey of becoming who you've always really been, uncovering, discovering who that essence really is. Um, and it's, it's an unchanging essence. And this practice of being present can point us to our life beyond our life story. So I have a life story, this character I play, right? PJ is on YouTube, does this thing, you know, is this old and does this job and does that? Like, these are all stories. I'm from this place. I was, you know, all the stories. But is that really who I am? And that there's another great book called Untethered Soul by Michael A. Singer. And in that book, he talks about this practice of like continuing to ask, which is actually like a really uh, famous and popular spiritual practice of continuing to ask, who am I? Who am I? Who am I? Who am I? And getting deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper until you find the true answer to that, which is your eternal self. It's the unchanging essence of who you are and really the essence where I think we all share and we're all one in that. So that's really the power of being present. Through being present, you can go beyond the stories and go to the eternal self. And that is something that Eckhart Tolle and his teachings can really help us do and discover and uncover that eternal self that we all have. Now, real quick, before we jump into talking a little bit more about Kendrick, in the second part of the video, we're going to talk about or I'm going to talk about my own journey with Eckhart Tolle's teachings because I want to give a little bit of encouragement and just uh, maybe share through sharing my own experience, help you uh, navigate your own experience. And uh, maybe it resonates and helps you out on your own journey of spiritual of navigating these spiritual teachings. When I first read The Power of Now, I literally understood nothing. Like I was just, I mean, on a level of un, like logical understanding, I was like, oh yeah, cool. Like present, you know, cool. Like being present, no, like no thoughts. Sounds great. You know, but I never experientially had the experience. It's like people use a metaphor of like, you can talk about honey all day, but until you eat honey, you, you're not going to know what honey is, you know, or, or, or taste like and get really experience it. I can read about honey. I can study textbooks about honey. I can understand the chemical structure of a honey, but I'm not going to understand really what honey is until I taste it. Um, and that's what being present feels like. So I read this book, you know, I, I think I had just gone through like a breakup. So I was like reading all the, you know, self-help books. I was like, you know, I, I'm trying to fix my life. But anyways, but, um, I read this book, didn't get it but the seeds were planted. So that's why I really want to share with you. It's like 
just because you read one of these books and you don't understand everything, don't get everything, nothing, you don't feel like anything really got absorbed, doesn't mean the seeds have not been planted. The seeds are have been planted, ideas are now in your mind, and when the soil is ready, they will go in and, and sprout and basically lead to fruits in your mind and in your life. And that's exactly what happened for me. So I read The Power of Now, didn't get it, but the, but the lessons were implanted in my mind despite, you know, without me knowing technically, basically without me realizing that they have in fact, you know, been implanted in me and that the seeds have been planted until, and I, and I debated whether or not I should share this experience, but it's, it's the truth. So I'm going to share it until I had my first psychedelic experience and I was like, oh, so this is what being present feels like. I was like, I've never seen, you know, a tree so alive. Like I, I've never seen life so alive. And yes, of course I was, you can say I was under the influence, but I learned in that moment, in that experience, what being present feels like. Cause immediately, like upon having that experience in the first few moments, I was like, this is what Eckhart Tolle was talking about. Like I had that recognition immediately. All the lessons that I had learned, that I had read in this book, but not really fully learned, all of them become, came to life. So like immediately after that whole experience, I was like, where is my power of now? I gotta read this book again. I read it, listened to it a bunch of times, listened to a new earth or read it, um, or, or read it. That sounded like I said read it. Um, but basically, you know, his books, they all came to life for me. So, you know, like I said, the seeds were planted, but, but the soil of my mind, my mind was not yet ready for the teachings to, to go in and, and, and bear fruits. But through that experience, they did and I understood what he was talking about on a much deeper level and I was like, oh, I don't need these tools, this tool that I just used to get into the state, I don't need that because there are other natural ways it can get into that state and that state, the, f the first time you experience it, you know, if you experience it through deep meditation, through breath work, whatever modality, through, I, I experienced it through running, the first time that I experienced that, you know, without any sort of, um, other influences, I was running and I just kept pushing through the point where I felt like, oh, I can't run anymore. And those thoughts were just like, stop, you're killing us, you know, like you're gonna die. And I just kept pushing through. Then I experienced this deep quiet where like all the thoughts, I felt like they gave up. They were like, okay, this, there's no convincing this guy. And I just went into this complete deep presence. And I was like, wow, like there are other ways to get here. And also, honestly, that's how I got into meditation through running. Running was like my gateway into meditation. And so now I like, I meditate every day. I've been meditating for every day, you know, for five, six years now. And it's not because like I'm so disciplined. It's because it feels so good to just be that present. It just feels so, um, invigorating. It, it get, fills me up for, you know, with so much energy in life and just excitement and meaning and purpose and, and just satisfaction that goes beyond the passing nature of life. So that's my own personal journey with Eckhart Tolle's um, teachings. Didn't get them at first, but the seeds were planted and they bear fruit later when my mind was ready. And um, when I was spiritually ready, you know, and was more open and receptive to the teachings themselves. And now, you know, like I said earlier in the video, I've read and listened to like so, so many you know, Eckhart Tolle audiobooks and uh, lectures and YouTube videos and books and, you know, whatever. Um, and even took his, uh, you know, was lucky enough to go into, not go into, you know, but virtually uh, joined the school of awakening that he has or had. Um, and so just, that's just my own personal journey. I hope that helps someone. If you feel like you're reading the books and you're like not getting it, don't worry, the seeds are still being planted. So that's all I want to share. Let's talk about Kendrick Lamar. Okay, so now let's talk about Kendrick Lamar. To be honest with you, I don't have as much to say about Kendrick just because this video, I feel like Kendrick is way more well known um, than Eckhart Tolle, which is obviously one of the main reasons why I think it's so significant that he collaborated with Eckhart Tolle. But, you know, I don't have as much to say because I feel like he's more well known um, and he really needs no introduction. But for those of you who are here on this video 
due to recognizing Eckhart Tolle and don't know much, uh, don't know as much about Kendrick. Let's just say that he is the goat. He's one of the greatest rappers of definitely our time. Um, and definitely, I would say of all time, you know, top 10 for sure. Top five. Okay. I'll, I'll get some hate if I say top five, but like if you, I, I so I was doing a little bit of research and I was like, I wonder how many different lists of like top hip hop albums of all time have mentioned Kendrick, you know, in the top 10, almost all of them, like one of his albums, you know, one or two sometimes, or maybe three, like sometimes were in the top 10 of so many different lists. And I, I agree. I think he's one of the most powerful storytellers, lyricists, um, and just creators of our time for sure. And in, in, in a, through the medium of rap music and really, uh, his damn album, like pretty much saved my life. I was just in a really bad place, deep, dark place in 2019. Which is funny because when the damn album came out, I didn't resonate with it at first. So I didn't really even listen to it as much. But then when I went through that season of kind of like depression then I li- and, and victim mentality, damn is what just got me out of that. It was like, when I listened to damn, I don't know what happened, but like something shifted in me. And it's, there's this line at the very end, or you could say the beginning because the damn track list can be reversed and it's actually reversed in the deluxe version. But basically, um or the collector's uh edition but it says it was always me versus the world until i realized it's me versus me and so it's like that whole album is about you know self-reflection self-empowerment whereas some of his other albums were more about community political you know the political sphere this album i feel like is a lot this mr morale and the big steppers is a lot about his family um, and his journey as a father and just his own, again, his own personal growth, um, and how his own personal growth, uh, growth affects his family and generational, you know, bloodline and so on and so forth. But basically he's the only rapper that I know of. And I think that has ever won a Pulitzer prize for a rap album. His damn album in 2017 won a Pulitzer prize, which I think is so rightfully deserved that album like to me that's just I, that album just the damn album i know we're talking about the new album but damn album just damn <laughs> it just changed my life i swear to god um it's like when i hear dna it just it's uh it just does something to me so anyways that's a little bit about kendrick lamar uh like i said um mr morale and the big steppers have a cartole in them and the the part like i said in early in the video but since we're talking about kendrick the part of eckhart's teachings that um, kendrick really focused on in the album is the pain body so he talks about that a lot um and i just saw that his uh little spotify documentary came out today actually um of kendrick being in ghana so i haven't watched it yet but i feel like you know just a few lines i heard it's like he's Obviously, he's always been introspective, but he's been, I feel like, even more introspective um, for this album. Because in order to make an album, in, in one of Kendrick's interviews I was hearing, like, which makes total sense to me, he was talking about how, like, in order to make an album like this, you know, where he's talking about these deep experiences, he actually has to kind of relive them. And a lot of people who have written biographies and have explained their traumatic kind of past and stories unfortunately but fortunately for the sake of the reader unfortunately for the artist they had to revisit that and get in that state so it's very taxing on the nervous system on the emotional body but he uh he really has been trying to like work on that pain body and just his own pain in it from his past and trying to be the best father and best husband that he can be for his children for for his wife but basically um the whole album is very introspective um and the pain body is the main thing that he talks about in that album from Eckhart's teachings. Okay, so unfortunately, I don't have too much more to say about Kendrick because, like I said, I feel like he needs no introduction. Uh, but like I said, the GOAT, you know, one of the greatest rappers of all time and just 
the album is amazing. You know, his whole, I feel like he has, I, I've, I've done this a lot on Apple Music. They have like, they showed the essential albums of each artist. If you go on their page, you know, you see like, oh, like this person's like second album is considered as an essential album, like one of their best. Kendrick literally, I feel like has all of them in there except the new one but i think it takes some time for it to become considered an essential album but literally his whole um this this cog this car i don't know how to say that word but his whole collection of albums the whole thing every album is just like amazing so i feel like he's had one of the most amazing runs in hip-hop history and has just been phenomenal every single time and he does take his time with his albums but it really pays off every time he you know comes out with an album you're like oh <laughs> that's why he's a goat you know like thanks for the reminder but basically i personally really resonate with kendrick lamar i feel like on the enneagram as i talked about earlier i feel like we personally have the same personality type um which is a peacemaker the type nine and i actually did like a little google search and tried to figure out what other people think Kendrick Lamar's Enneagram type is and a lot of people thought he's a type 9 because he's so much a peacemaker you know and and sometimes he does lose his temper and go off on people but like for the most part he's trying to bring healing trying to bring self-awareness trying to bring reconciliation and and help bring peace really ultimately like he's trying to bring bring that into the world um and he just he doesn't seem to, t to be the type that like is like going out there trying to like look for conflict. He's trying to resolve conflict, which is like a really be big characteristic of type nines, um, the peacemaker type. So anyway, so I feel like I always feel that connection with Kendrick as do a lot of other people. And he's just able to share so deeply and profoundly about his own life story that the listeners can find something in that story that is deeper than just a personal story and relates to a much larger audience and everyone can find a piece of his story that uh, that relates to their own story so a very powerful artist i think one of the best storytellers um of you know storytellers of hip-hop definitely but like being able to tell stories through music i think he's one of the best um and so yeah let's move on to the very last part of the video which is what this whole video technically is about so the last part of the video is about why i think the collaboration of kendrick lamar with eckhart tolle is so significant and so awesome and amazing to witness and to see happen well it's because this concept that is said david r hawkins is someone who used to talk about this a lot um, in his lectures but it's this concept of the rising tide lifts all ships that concept effects con is, is applied to and relates to consciousness how consciousness works and operates consciousness and just people's awareness like you know like how are we actually being like are we evolving more and more into states of peace and love and unity and joy and you know all of these like positive states are we moving on more into those states from from consciousness levels of like fear shame guilt apathy uh you know anger those kind of states if you look at those as lower consciousnesses and states of being then are we moving upwards to the higher consciousness states like love peace joy unity all those things i said earlier are we going up this ladder collectively but also individually but the meaning of the rising tide lifts all ships in, when it comes to consciousness as we evolve our own consciousness as we personally overcome these deep traumas and other issues that we have and work on ourselves and heal ourselves as we and, and evolve our consciousness which is both an act of simultaneously dedication and us putting in the effort and the grace of something higher than ourselves the grace of god intervening and helping us on that journey so it's like a matter of both but basically as we do that work individually we're rising raising the tide and as the tide goes up 
everyone moves up. And so historically, the consciousness of the humankind um, was very low. You know, people were doing just like insane things, unspeakable acts, you know, and uh, just like all kinds of just like crazy stuff. And as we've evolved over thousands of years, you know, it takes a long time for consciousness to go up. But I think due to the connectedness of our generation through social media and the Internet, it has sped up that that um, that uh, transition to higher states of consciousness collectively and individually. But it's also um, the reason why I think it's so awesome that Kendrick Lamar and, and, and Eckhart are collaborating and that Kendrick who has a huge platform, put a cartole on his album. Um, I think that's a huge, a huge factor of speeding up the, you know, bringing about of the new earth, which is, you know, basically a, a version of earth, the same earth really, but with people's consciousness in a more evolved state. Um, and so I think it's a huge deal that he's doing that because Kendrick is helping through bringing, you know, Eckhart on uh, onto his platform, his helping raise the tide. It, and as that goes up, as the consciousness evolves, you know, it, it evolves for everyone. So, you know, like I said, our, our times compared to like thousand years ago, we seem a lot better. We still have a long way to go, obviously, um, but we have come a long way. And that's that's because the rising tide of consciousness has helped shift everyone's you know to some uh, some degree that doesn't mean we don't have low consciousness high consciousness it's like a soup you know but like as uh honestly i feel like the metaphor of the soup kind of work it's like it's like a soup and it adds different ingredients but if you add like more of one ingredient you'll probably taste that more like if i add a lot of salt in that soup i'll probably taste that salt more than anything else that's in that and so if you add love more in that soup, if you add peace more in that soup, if you add these kind of like higher consciousness states in that soup, you'll start tasting those more collectively. So I feel like I just pushed that metaphor to its absolute limit. So we're going to we're going to go to the next point as to why I think it's super awesome that Kendrick and Eckhart are collaborating, that Kendrick put Eckhart Tolle on his album and that they're just working together. It's just super awesome. So. The second reason why I think it's super awesome is because of what happened to me, right? It's because how if you become aware of Eckhart Tolle's teachings, if you read his books, listen to his lectures or whatever, or whatever, even if you don't pick up on what he's saying and understand it in that moment, that does not mean that the seeds have not been planted. The seeds have been planted and that's all that matters. It's like the story of Jesus um, where he's talking about the farmer that's like basically throwing these seeds out and some land on a fertile soil and bear fruit, some land on rocks, some land on, you know, ground and birds eat them. But basically it doesn't matter if it didn't penetrate into all the, all the parts of the earth. Those parts that it did go through led to, you know, bearing fruit. And that's the literally the same thing of these type of informations and, um, knowledge and just like understanding the seeds being even on the surface of our of our soil of the soil of our mind even if our mind is not ready yet when it is ready they will bloom and blossom into um, beautiful trees and fruits and so I think it's just awesome that he is exposing in a positive way I feel like exposing as a ne negative connotation but bringing attention to Eckhart Tolle's teachings because through that he's letting um, these seeds be scattered into people's mind and consciousness. And so some people may hear that, you know, uh, Eckhart's voice and be like, who the, who the heck is this guy on this album? Like this, this guy with this like kind of German accent talking, like what is going on here? And, and look into that and then find his books, read his books, listen to his lectures, you know, and so on and so forth. And then this, those seeds are planted. So when they're ready, maybe they're ready now. They just don't realize it. Or when they are ready, because those seeds have been planted, they will bear fruit. And that would benefit not only that person, but everyone. Because like, like I said in the first point, the rising tide of, in consciousness lifts all ships, basically. Like as our individual consciousnesses evolve, it helps the collective consciousness evolve as well and vice versa. So it's just a really awesome thing to see these two 
just incredible minds of our time collab. Uh, it's uh, I read a lot of the comments because Eckhart Tolle actually posted on his YouTube um, on the community tab. He posted that like he you know is on um, Kendrick's album, and a lot of people had commented like the the collaboration that we didn't know we we need you know, and it's it's so true. It's like no one saw it coming, but it's just like. To me, it's like one of the coolest things I've seen in the recent months to happen. So uh, let's talk about the last point where I think it's super awesome that these two have collabed and have made this, you know, these few songs together. So I think the last point that I think is is important to mention here and the last point as to why it's important and awesome that these two have collaborated is because there is a deeper aspect of us, the deepest part of us, the deepest sense of self of us who we truly are, that eternal self that I talked about earlier, that part of us, when it hears the truth, it, it recognizes it. Even if we don't consciously yet like pick it up, that deeper aspect of us, it's like, you know how they say real recognizes real, like like recognizes like, like real recognizes real. The, the truth recognizes the truth within us. That truth will resonate. And Eckhart Tolle teaches a lot of truth. He shares a lot of truth. That applies to any religion. Like sometimes I think I saw some videos online um, of people talking about like, oh, you know, this guy like Kendrick Lamar collaborating with this like, like I don't know, like devil worshiper or something crazy. And I was like, what are you guys talking about? Have you ever read Eckhart Tolle's books? Like, literally, it can help people of any faith. It, it has nothing to do like with what religion you are. You can literally be any have any religion. If you are present, if you are more than now, that's going to help you in your practice of connecting more and more to your spiritual, you know, uh, teacher to, to the main, you know, to the prophet of that religion, to God. It's going to help you with that. So it's not, it's not like a religion. It's, it's to help you in whatever walk of life you are in spiritually to connect more and more deeply with the essence of those teachings. And I have been able to digest teachings of Jesus way better because of the teachings and the power of now. I have been able to be present and the states of consciousness of those teachers such as Jesus are so high and so deeply rooted in being present that when you are present, that truth, that real recognizes real, that truth in those teachings resonate with the truth within you. And that starts to awaken it. It's kind of like... um it's kind of like this, this, uh, in Justice League, in, in the movie Justice League, like, there's these, like, these little boxes, and these boxes are just, like, laying dormant, and then something happens, and they start to awaken. So those boxes were already there, but they were dormant. And so the truth is already within us, but it's dormant. And it takes some sort of catalyst to start to wake them up. But then when, when that truth is awakened within us, it becomes such a powerful force of transformation inwardly and then outwardly you know the whole new earth i would say eckhart tolle's books go like this this is about inner personal transformation of the self of our own individual selves the power of now this is about how our individual transformation helps the collective transformation and he basically talks about how in order to survive as a human race, we need to work on raising our consciousness because we can't bring the same consciousness that prevail in the 20th century into the 20, 21st century because and, and beyond because of the technology that we have is so much more powerful and simultaneously could be positive, but simultaneously could be way more destructive. Because of that, we need to also have an elevated higher consciousness to be able to navigate this, um, this different world. And, and to not basically lead to our own demise as a human race. So that's how I would structure those two books. You know, it's the personal and, and then the collective, which is so similar to Kendrick's albums. I feel like Damn is a personal Mr. Morale and the Big Steppers too, but some of his albums are more about the internal self reflection. And then the, some of his other albums are more about the external, the collective reflection. Um, reflection and the work that we collectively 
need to focus on and then the other albums are more in, in inward and internal versus external so uh i think these two collabing is just awesome it's going to lead to a lot of people discovering Eckhart Tolle, um finding his books finding his lectures getting into that having those truth seeds being planted in their soul souls and the soil of their mind resonating with that deeper aspect of themselves and bringing online that deepest aspect of who they are and of who we all are and through that it literally leads to transforming the world as we change ourselves we change the world so super awesome that i lived to see this day you know happen uh never saw never thought you know this would happen but it's it's awesome so shout out to kendrick for recognizing real real recognizes real brought eckhart tolle on shout out to eckhart tolle for like saying yes and not being like oh like i don't do that you know like that's just so freaking awesome so um you know to to you guys like eckhart tolle and kendrick lamar if you guys see this you know i really appreciate the work that you both have done probably won't see this i don't even know what i'm saying this part. <laughs> but shout out to both of these individuals shout out to the work that they have done and you know i'm very inspired by their examples and how as humans we can use our human life in these ways that these people have like we all have the same you know as people say like in motivational talks we all have the same 24 hours we all have the same kind of you know basically amount of time in terms of like in a day and we can choose how to spend that and like some people choose to spend it in a way that brings out such gifts into the world. So I just think it's so awesome that these two great minds have collaborated and that we live to see it. So shout out to you guys for watching the video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you are new to Eckhart Tolle's teachings, I hope that this served as an intro for you into that. If you are new to hearing about Kendrick Lamar, I hope you guys check it out and say, damn, <laughs> this is this is amazing um and you know there are whole podcasts on like breaking down kendrick lamar's lyrics and trying to understand like some people like discover a meaning in a song from eight years ago like eight years after it's been said um and so just an amazing artist uh and so yeah i hope that this video helps you you know discover these two great minds i hope that you guys see uh, how cool it is that Kendrick put uh, Eckhart Tolle on his album and that uh, you guys benefit from this video in some shape or form. If you enjoyed it, if you liked it, please like and subscribe as that helps me motivationally. <laughs> you know, as I see those likes and subscribers go up, it's like, oh, cool. Like, I'm going to make more videos. But anyways, I hope that you guys enjoyed this. I hope that this was helpful for you. And I hope to see you guys in my next video soon. I will be putting out some courses and content on how to meditate, on, on how to journal, how to connect more with your true self, your authentic self, and all these things that I have learned from these incredible teachers around the world, trying to share them with you in a way that I have understood them so that hopefully you can help yourself and understand them as well and apply them to your life. So hope to see you guys on my channel and in my future videos. And until then, take care and I'm gonna say the cheesiest line, stay present. Bye.